<laughs> this is a 37 year old lady who's actually status post laminectomy for a section of a, a spinal AVM. Um, she was actually taken care of by the chair of our department and she came back to his clinic with her head sort of uh, in a flexed posture and complained about a lot of neck pain, really uh, no deficit. He swears he did not touch the, uh, the facets at all. So she looks quite uncomfortable, really can't uh, move, her, move her neck at all. And this is her her plain film. And you can see that she's had a C2 through the oh, top of C5, I think two, three, four, top of C5 laminectomy done with actually pretty good preservation of her facets. Um, and so she has this, this plain film. And then I guess uh, she had repeat MRI, showed her facets were completely, or her, uh, her AVM was completely resected. Anybody else have suggestions for other studies? And you guys are gonna have to look at the chat because I can't, I can't see it. Well, I so any other... extension views. Um, one, I'd like to know what the MRI. I guess you got the MRI. The MRI. Um, I want to see if the, what segments are mobile and how mobile she is. <clears throat> okay, so uh, that uh, is her extension film. Um, And her flex, her flex and extension look exactly the same as her lateral. So she's basically a fixed kyphotic deformity. And this is only um, about 10 weeks post-op that she presented. Um, and we sent her to physical therapy and did some things and she would not, would not change at all. So like Paulo says, um, you know, disruption of posterior columns, et cetera, intradural work, th there's a huge propensity to this kind of stuff. Although this is um, a quite early and impressive kyphosis. Yeah, can you see my arrow, you guys? Yes. On there. So you can see that this joint too is, is somewhat open. She's open here um, and a little bit open here and probably the same. I don't know if she's opened on here. That, but I ended up getting a CT scan on her. As you can see, this is this is her uh, midline cut, midline sagittal, and then this shows her facets. Uh, one is left side, one is right side. And any any comments? Yeah, it's really it's re it looks really amazing because uh, because it's so short time after after surgery. It's uh, basically she developed um, uh, dislocations on the on that side, facetive locations on that side. Yeah, she's she's close to perched here yeah. and here. Yeah. Um, and then the facet <laughs> joints are widened at yeah. three, four, four, five, five, six. And then the other side, you can see that she sort of spot welded things here. You can see a little bit of a fusion there, a little bit of a fusion there, potential fusion there, and then a widened uh, facet joint here. So we, we put her in traction and she was um, just outright, uh, outright miserable. And so the real question becomes, what do you, what do you do with something like this? It looks like she's almost like spot welding in a couple of places. Like there's a, like she's starting yeah. to fuse. Yeah, so two, I, three, three, four, four, five. Yeah, I, I would approach this uh, by way of a posterior approach with uh, aggressive uh, uh, osteotomies, facet osteotomies, and place implants and see what kind of correction I could get. If I couldn't, um, I would um, turn her over and do ACDFs um, and uh, dis disrupt the joint, get as great extension. If it looks like I can get extension, I might put an implant in. If I can't get the extension that I truly want, I might take, by, the, the, by that time, it's gonna be kind of late in the day, I might take her back and put her in traction again, although she evidently doesn't like that. Um, um, but, you know, I, I, I do a back front back, basically. Yeah, so I went, um, any, any other options? I know people say, oh, I'll go from the front first. People always talk about this. And I think after, 
after years of interacting with Ed, um, all my cervical deformities I do from the back first. I always start posteriorly first. And that's because the posterior release um, is certain when you get there, meaning you do the facetectomies, you can follow the route all the way out. You can see there's nothing left in place. And then you know if they don't correct that whatever more correction you're gonna get, you're gonna have to get from the front. Yeah. Um, Great. Did you did you try to put this patient uh, lying on a, on a in a horizontal like supine position and see how much she will actually correct herself because of uh, the well known viscoelasticity that uh, Ed is talking about? Well, she's she was um, anytime you try to extend her head, she would scream in pain. Um, so we actually uh, once we we gave her general anesthetic, we tried to extend her and it did not move, okay. not not at all. And in fact, when I got done with the osteotomies in the back, um, it didn't move at all either. Uh, and it was stuck. So we ended up going to the front um, on her. Um, and you can see that um, she's, 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 pretty, she's pretty thin, which is really unusual for my patient population. There's usually a lot more soft tissue on the, uh, on the people that I operate on. So there's gotta be something going on here. And then the other, the other question I'm gonna have for people is um, how long on the back and how long in the front? So, so I think that what you just said maybe is uh, answering one of the questions, uh, which approach. Uh, if, you, if you put the patient uh, supine while being anesthetized and if the patient was not correcting, and if you did osteotomies and the patient is not correcting, then, uh, then this is the answer of one of your questions. So you have to go first back, you have to release, then you have to go front, release, and then you have to go and, and, and fix from the back. That's, that's probably uh, uh, the most- But, but the important thing is you have to get the correction you're gonna get from the front um, once, once you've released the back. Um, it's, it's not likely- That's also true. It, so you have to, that's- yeah, the posterior, the posterior approach, the release is, is certain. I mean, you know it's released if you're looking at the nerve root go all the way out. And usually before I do the release, I will play, pre-place my screw holes for my lateral mass screws. So I make sure I don't destroy so much bone that I can't get a screw in there. The question is what levels do you do from the back and what levels from the front? So I think maybe- How long would you go? From the back, from the back I'll probably start from, uh, I think probably I will start from C2. And I will go all the way down to, let, let me see what is that, two, three, four, five. Uh, I think I will finish at six on the back. Okay. And then what levels yeah. from the front? So uh, can you show us the, uh, uh, the ones in which we can see the front? Yeah. You can see the body uh, space. I'm afraid that. So I think maybe three, four, and four, five, and I will think also five, six from from front probably. What about what about two, three? Since you did it from the back, uh, two, three probably. I will just uh, leave it for correction from the back because to my eyes this looks like not very bad. Yeah, I I would tend to go to go to two, three again. Uh, also, probably if I if I was able to get there. Also, because there is. You, you can see some subluxation anteriorly. Uh, the, the slope, the C3 slope is, is very steep. So um, yeah, it depends on the position, intraoperative position, but yeah. 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 And, and what would your anterior operation be? How would you, sorry? Yeah, what would you do in the front? Corpectomies, discectomies, anything? No, discectomies, just discectomies. Same for me. Discectomy and I might plate as well. Yeah, okay, because yeah. there's nothing in the in the vertebral body. So, uh, and I think the 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 likelihood for fusion is uh, at least in my hands is higher with multilateral or ACDF than with uh, with capectomy. I and agree. Here, I think I think your fusion is better anyway because he's she's just pouring out BMPs. It seems. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and if you talk about the about poster instrumentation too. Poster instrumentation should be thought of more as a as a holding device and not a correcting device, because yeah. I think the screw strength is not not uh, quite as good. Um, and in the front, you can get pretty good long screws. Um, and I usually just take and measure the depth 
and subtract two to three millimeters. And that's the length of my screw that almost gets you all the way to the back of the, of the body. Ed, would you do a two, three ACDF on this? In addition Pro to three, four, probably four, five, not. Five, I'd be worried about dysphagia. I'd do a yeah. three, four and four, five ACDF. And if I could get great extension, uh, I'd plate. But if yeah, I couldn't wasn't... get extension, I, you know, if I didn't correct well with a deformity operation, I, I wouldn't put a plate in because you, you're now going to go to the back and want to get more. Yeah, so I, I essentially did the, uh, the facetectomies 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, and 5, 6, and it really didn't move. And when I went to the front and did the discectomies, I'd get the disc spaces to distract, but nothing would, would really move. So... Um, the way that I achieved the correction was to actually fix the terminal points of the plate and then use the plate to draw the other vertebral bodies up, um, being careful not to, not to try to get too much out of it. Um, and this is, this is an old case. So um, this is essentially what I did. Um, and got her in a reasonably good position. Her C2, C7 plumb line is pretty good. She's straight, I, guarantee, I, I grant you, but that's about the best I was gonna do. And I was always taught that the, the enemy of good enough is better. Mm -hmm. And I so, you pulled the, so you pulled the, 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 three, the C3 and, and the, the C4 and C5 vertebral bodies to the plate, correct? C correct, and I was, and I was careful um, because I didn't want to overstress the screw. So that's my point yeah. about the enemy of good enough is, is better. Yeah. Um, and I already knew that her C7T1 slope or C7T1 slope wasn't very high, um, that I could get her two, three disc space pretty parallel to the floor. And I was going to fix it from behind anyway. So. Oh, that's not one. Oh, great result. So, yeah. Well, let's see here. You guys, it's ten twenty-seven. Do you have a Do you have a quiz or something you want to give? We here do. or not? Uh, do you have, or don't? No, no. It's we just have five, multiple choice questions. Alrighty, because um, we're we're supposed to be done in like two minutes. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you want to just quickly show it, and we we can, we can discuss keep discussion for some other day. Yeah, I can ah. I can quickly sh show it. This one's not not so easy. Um, Imad, have you got the quiz ready? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. So this this is a uh, fifty two year old lady. Um, who basically didn't, didn't have much in the way of myelopathy, but certainly had radiculopathy that the treating surgeon thought was related to uh, four, five, and five, six. And then the question is, in, in that case, what's the best, what's the best operation um, for her? And he decided to go from the front. How so because of time, I'll 50, 52, 53, pretty active. Do you have more investigations? No, I did, this is, she's not my patient at this point. So it's a radiculopathy, right? Yeah, MRI? cervical radiculopathy. Uh, I don't have the MRI either. I probably do. I didn't put it in here. <laughs> okay. Let me let me just see once. It may be here. It may be. Yeah, there's her MRI originally. So stenosis, some four, five, five, six uh, roots that uh, has a disc. It has this disc at the. Uh, at, at four or five, pretty collapsed disc spaces, not great lordosis at four or five particularly. I would go for a two-level uh, two ATDF and plate. I agree with you, Paulo. I'll probably go there and I will try to put big uh, cage and I will plate as well. Yeah, so that's not what happened. She had that done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, okay, so it's not my patient yet. She did fine for a while uh, and then developed worsening neck pain and some, some C6 radiculopathy. Um, and her treating physician got this. And they were not, not too bad looking. Um, and then ended up getting this mm. about three months down the road when she started complaining about arm pain. 
And this is a problem now because this is difficult to. Realize. It's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a problem, and the um, the uh, the treating docs and I have no idea what to do. So you said that's a bigger problem now. Was this because yeah. of flexion X-ray or? Uh, well, that's just her, her lateral. So this is flexion and extension. So it basically just stays the same. And he ended up getting a CT scan on her and it looks like that. And then you can look at the joints and you can see that um, at five, six, it looks like it's right. potentially fused. Um, the components are still where they were uh, initially. It's just that she's completely dislocated the, uh, the implant. The concern that I had was I didn't know where the, the polyethylene core was with, with this, with this uh, lower level and what to, what to do about it. Usually the polyethylene core sits on, um, it's sort of H-shaped and sits between these little, uh, little things coming off, the, off the, the end plate. All right, so now she's my patient. And, oops, probably didn't show the final result. No, I put the, pulled the wrong one in here. But essentially what I did was I was worried that trying to just go posterior and try to relocate this um, was not going to be possible. And I actually went, went posteriorly and released the facets. And she didn't want either one of her arthroplasties anymore. She said, just get them out. So we released the joints posteriorly um, at, at five, six, and really didn't move. And then flipped her over and we're, we were able to pop the pop the, uh, the super implant off and the inferior implant off. Um, and then she started to reduce with just a little bit of time and a little bit of distraction. She eventually ended up with, with, with basically normal alignment. Um, and I did go back in the, uh, in the back and do a posterior fusion with it. Okay. And she so you, did not the well. case. you did not do corpectomy here? No, no. The, uh, the implant actually came off pretty easily here. Um, and once we released her posteriorly, you could distract her a little bit and you could actually see the polyethylene core that was sitting along the bottom. So, so you, went, you went back osteotomy, then anterior relief, and then posterior fixation. That's yeah, right. I fixated from the front too. Ah, I put from, grafts okay. in and plated the front, yeah. and then okay. just added the hardware posteriorly because of the dislocation. And sorry, how, how long after the primary operation uh, this has happened? Uh, about 10 months. 10 months, okay. Yeah, she was well. Uh, I think it was in January that she presented to him in August, came to see me in October. Okay. He basically right. told her, oh, this is stable. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, bilateral lactose sets really are stable because they don't really move anywhere. But... Okay. Right, great. Uh, 